Mike Daisy, uh, the, uh, the star of Agony, the agony and the ecstasy of Steve Jobs. Mike, your work, um, your monologue is a, to some extent about China, but it's also about America. It's about mm -hmm. this new division in the global economy between the, the high design ethic of the United States and the industrial labor economy of China. What does that, though, tell us about America? What does it tell us where all the value is in Apple, in the design work in Apple, and Apple now the second most valuable company in the world? Nothing's being produced in America. What does it tell us about unemployment in America and the future of the hinterland, the future of the industrial worker in America? Well, I mean, it says something very deep. I mean, let's be clear. Not only are none of the devices made in America, none of them are made by Apple. I mean, if people want the kind of protection that they have from labor enforcement, Apple subcontracts everything it makes to Foxconn and other companies, Han Hai, companies that the vast majority of people who are even a little bit outside of technology have never heard of any of these of these companies. Um, they make these devices. Apple doesn't make anything, does not actually make anything. And I think that's important for people to understand that Apple makes nothing. Neither do any of the other major manufacturers do not make anything. They subcontract. And um, so the reason they do that in large part is to avoid responsibility for the circumstances of, of, of whom they subcontract to. And I think that says something very um, dark about uh, the state of our ethics, the state of our business landscape. You know, like um, uh, at the end of the day, design, great design, depends on an actual thing being designed. Like the physical object matters. In fact, Apple fetishizes that to such a high degree that the physical object matters. The making of the object is an art. And if the art is cruel and um, in dehumanizing, this says something about the people who are who are making it, and and the, and and by extension us. It's very um, it's very imperial. I mean, it's 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 not good. It's not a good thing for America. It's not a good thing for the state, the state of your country, to be exporting all of the making of objects out of the country, keeping only sort of the. The, the, the design itself and the sort of intellectual filigree that goes around it. They may be the highest forms of it, but um, if you're not willing to commit to the kind of rigor that labor requires, you know, the kind of rigor, um, then you end up in situations like this. And let's be clear, Apple is so obsessed with industrial design, with, with the aluminum being milled just so, with everything being so fine and perfect. And I, in my first two hours standing outside the Foxconn plant, I met workers who were 14 years old. I met workers who were 13 years old. I met workers who were 12. And does anyone think Apple doesn't know? Does anyone really believe that they don't know? Or are they and everyone else who makes electronics doing the same thing? They simply see what they want to see so they can keep moving forward, keep shipping the next product? Do they just blind themselves? Who should be responsible at Apple? Um, Steve Jobs isn't there anymore. He's taken a leave of absence. Um, what groups should be aware of this and how should they respond? Well, it's like any corporation, right? So corporations are designed to avoid personal responsibility. It's one of the reasons we've created them as a form. Um, so it's always hard to hold them accountable. At the end of the day, every shareholder at Apple should know and should understand that the incredible gains that Apple's made, the incredible profit that they're getting, the scale of that profit, and Apple's ability to scale its products over the last five, six, seven years at such a pace that they can deliver those kind of earnings comes because of its alliances with Foxconn and its embrace of these exact systems. And so they're personally responsible, the shareholders. That money came with a cost. So, so you mean everyone who owns Apple stock? Yeah. Those are, you own the corporation. They are the ones that should help hold Apple accountable. And the same is true of all our corporations that work in electronics. They're all working the same way. 
So ultimately, you know, it's like anything. When something uh, deeply unethical has happened, you know, and you look to clean up the mess afterwards, um, it's very hard to apportion blame. I'm less interested in apportioning blame. I'm more interested in how we will start to hold people accountable uh, in the future. How will we will actually ensure that the workers I visited are receiving some version of, of the dream that, 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 was, that brought them to Shenzhen, the dream that they were working in good jobs that were sustainable into the future instead of being used up the way that they are now. Um, it's very, very important.